So, welcome back to another episode, and this is my Star Wars Episode 7 review. And I know there's a thousand billion other people doing a review in Star Wars this weekend. Absolutely, and because uh, everybody wants to talk about it, they really do. And for me, I saw all the original movies in the theater. I've waited like 30 plus years to see a pseudo sequel to Return of the Jedi. What did I think? What did I think? Uh, of the entire movie. Would I recommend the movie? Let's start off with that. I would recommend the movie, absolutely, 100%. I will talk about a lot of the positives first, then I'll talk about some of the negatives I, I kind of felt of the movie. Um, overall, I thought the movie was good. It was good. I can't say it was bad. It's definitely better than the, the prequel movies, 100%. Uh, the first positive thing I want to say is the cast, the new cast, is incredible. I mean, I was blown away by the acting caliber of all the new people. They were wonderful. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Ray, Ridley, Daisy, uh, you know, was un... She was spent. She stole the show. She stole the show. Uh, John Boyega, 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 <laughs> uh, he was unbelievable too, wonderful, I mean, these guys were so charismatic, uh, Adam Driver was something else, so, I'm, this is a no, this is like, um, spoilers heavy, I'm just gonna be, I'm just gonna talk, uh, throughout it, so, those, all the new characters were spot on, they, the, I mean, they're acting, like, I love the original cast, but there, this new acting was beyond the original cast. This was like, I couldn't believe it. Um, okay, uh, some other positives. Han Solo and Chewbacca, on point, perfectly on point. Han Solo was just the way he used to be. His acting caliber was up there, you know, and him and Chewbacca. Uh, another thing I want to talk about, the humor of this movie. A lot of people were saying to me, oh, I think it has too much jokes, too much, you know, this. But if you watch the original, you know, the original movies, there's a lot of, uh, you know, humor all the way through. And I thought it was fitting. It keeps it light, uh, you know, and then all of a sudden something intense happens. And yeah, I, I really like the humor. There was not one piece of humor that I thought was like, ooh, that's terribly cheesy. I, I thought it was all fitting and, and really funny. What else was really positive? Oh, geez, let's see. Uh, the First Order were cool. They were uh, obviously the, the next step up from the Empire, and I thought I thought they were handled extremely well. Uh, General Hux was awesome. Loved it. Loved it. The story overall wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. I thought it told a, a pretty good story. We were a little bit all over the place uh, at times, but that's what a story is about. Uh, I just sometimes felt like we were kind of going over the, you know, here and there, here and there, capture here and there, but uh, I can't grumble about that. The overall story arc was pretty good. So overall, did I like the movie? I did. I thought it was really a lot of fun. I thought there were some incredible moments. I mean, like, god-tier moments for a Star Wars film. And uh, uh, that's another thing I want to talk about. Highlight moments. The lightsaber and fight sequence was a god-tier moment. That felt so like Star Wars and so beyond Star Wars. It was, they elevated it to a different level. I, I thought that was up there with one of my favorite lightsaber duels of all time. Really, you know, like Vader versus Luke was great. And I, that, you know, has its place in history, but this also has a place in history and something to be revered. I, I was so, I, that, that when that lightsaber scene was going on, I was like, so into it, so into it, so into it. Uh, and then when the, the planet broke apart, the Star Killer base broke apart, and both characters were separated. Whoa, that was a that was a great moment. Uh, again, spoilers. Han Solo's death was good. I was not unhappy with it. I remember when I saw Star Trek Generations and Kirk fell off a bridge and died. I was like, oh, it, I had no feeling about it. This had an emotional impact. He got killed by his son. I mean... That was epic. So I did a lot of predictions on Star Wars. I did the predictions with toys. I was right about a lot of things, and I was wrong about a lot of things. I, I, I didn't. I think I, I knew Kylo Ren was going to kill uh, 
Han Solo. I knew that was going to happen. I didn't know it was going to happen exactly which way, but I thought it was going to happen. I knew he'd get lightsaber down, and that, that happened. But, um, so Han Solo dying on point. I'm just trying to think, what else? Uh, the love story between Han and Leia was kind of followed through pretty okay. Um, Carrie Fisher has a... You know, she's, she, she just kind of made it through this movie. She really did. She's gotten a, a little bit older, and she's a little on the kind of crazy side, as we all know, her and her dog Gary. But she kind of made it through. She was able to deliver her lines. Um, but but Han was the one who really, you know, like, Harrison Ford just can pull off Han so like, like, just incredibly. Oh, I'm just trying to think what else was really good. The, the Millennium Falcon. Oh, obviously that was awesome. Uh, the, uh, BB-8, the new introduction of BB-8 was... A, a welcome addition to the team. It just made, it just flowed really, really well. Like uh, any BB-8, uh, you know, people in the audience were really reacting really great to that droid. It was awesome. And uh, yeah, and seeing the return of C-3PO and R2-D2, uh, they were a little bit subdued, uh, you know, in light of BB-8 taking over a little bit, but still really, really good. Um, I'm just trying to think what else. The reveal of Luke Skywalker at the end. Another thing I predicted, completely down to a T. Oh, that, that, the, I, I, I don't mind admitting it. When Han Solo got killed, I had tears. When Luke was revealed and that music comes in, and he just, it's just, you know, the classic Luke Skywalker theme. He just, I just, was, I was just like, I was, just, I was like this in the thin, I'm like, geez, I hope fucking nobody's seen that fucking cantitude out there. I've seen Luke Skywalker. But it was a real moment. And for Rey to go and train with Luke Skywalker now, oh, fucking, that was a great way to end the movie. Great way to end the movie. So, overall, I, I really liked the movie. I did. I did. Um, the things I didn't like, the things I didn't like, I really kind of, yeah, they, was an, they, were, they, they were bothering me. Okay. Uh, Supreme, uh, Supreme Commander Snook, Snoke, uh, I call him Supreme Commander Golem. I was like, played by, played by Andy Serkis, I'm like, oh, and I know it's a hologram. I was just like, why does this look so bad? I know, I, I, it just rubbed me the wrong way, I'm like, this is 2015, why are the effects on this so bad? It looked like Golem, Golem. I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't really big on that. I mean, I'm not a hater, but I wasn't a real fan of that. I was like, oh, whenever he showed up, I was kind of like, I was the disbelief I was taken out of it. I would have rather a nice holographic image or like a really darkened image where you can't even see him. That would have been cooler, but that kind of bothered me. Um, the Star Killer base bothered me. You know, like in the past, if you want to do a Death Star again, no problem. That's a good idea. Like, Death Stars are cool. No, everybody likes blowing up Death Stars. But in the other ones, it always seemed like it was a real challenge to blow up a Death Star. This one is like supposed to be like three, five, six times bigger than a Death Star, and it seemed to be three, five times easier to destroy. I was like, "Wow, that didn't take any effort." To be honest, I wasn't even paying attention to that. I was into the Ray battle, you know, when that was going. I was in that. I was invested in that. And then these guys, you know, it was just like uh, you know, Tie Fighters and and uh, X Wings are flying by, and then all of a sudden they shoot that one spot and it blows up. I'm like. Holy shit, we spent that much time building a fucking Death Star and it was that easy to blow up? Again, did they learn nothing from the Empire? Did they learn nothing from the Empire, right? So anyways, that's just a... Uh, you know what, I don't mind nerding out on that one a little bit. I can do it, I'm allowed to do it. Um, what else bothered me? Carrie Fisher just kind of got through, that was fine. Um, some of the CG characters kind of were very... D like it just kind of took me out of the movie like on Hans uh, Hans Freighter when those big creatures were going through the vines I was like a little bit goofy for me I, I don't know why that bothered me a little bit but it did I was like oh geez that's kind of weird um, but overall I, I accepted it right I, I didn't I didn't mind it some I thought kind of the pirates on the ship were kind of like you know it's, it's when the red guards ran in I was like oh this is cool and then uh, the, the, the human characters came, came in and kind of like took me out of it a little bit as well but that was, that was okay. I haven't got a problem with that. It's not the end of the world. So my nitpicks aren't that bad. The, the new little character by, uh, you know, you know the, the glasses. I didn't really buy the character too much. I mean, the character was good hearted and was good a good feeling character, but I wasn't feeling the character. You know, I was kind of always seeing the CG. It was giving me a bit of the prequel moments. I'm like, yeah, it's a, a CG character. 
I know, I was really upset that I was even, trust me, I didn't want to feel that way. Not at all. I was like, why couldn't we just had a, a puppet creature and just do some CG on the face? Just a little bit. You don't even need a lot. Uh, other than that, but but overall, like I think those are my only nitpicks. Those are the only things that really bothered me the most. Uh, the movie's very fast-paced. I got no problem with the pacing. It's a little bit bat all over the place at times. I, I guess maybe I would have liked it a bit slower, but man, I can't really bitch. I Overall, this is a handing of the old guard to the new guard and the new the new cast of characters is wow really something else i you know it's just like the girl of the the woman of game of thrones playing captain phasma phasma she had like two seconds i was like oh wow is that we never even got anything out of that hopefully in the next movie we get a little bit more um who else who else uh no those are my only things i think it's a really good handing of the guard over to the next one, and I'm really hoping the next one, that I know we've established all the characters, can be really just dark and really go in some interesting directions. I mean, Daisy Ridley is unbelievable. Stole the fucking show, man. Stole the show. Her, I just believed, I just totally bought into her. Into her being a Jedi. I completely, you know, like, uh, was sold on it. I, I just loved every single thing that she did. Uh, I just... I loved, I loved her, just, oh my gosh, she was so, the, the word is not like pretty or beautiful, it's this compassion you felt from her. Of course she was those other things as well, but man, you were just so drawn into her character. It was like, wow, really something else, but, uh, yeah, wow, what, a, what an experience. What an experience waiting so many years after Return of the Jedi for the new movie. I, mean, I never thought I'd ever see an episode seven, and... I can't complain because I got an episode seven. I, it was something I always dreamed about. And, uh, you know, like, to see... Oh, hey, do I have predictions about the next movie? Episode eight? Here's my predictions. Uh, Rey will become a powerful Jedi. Luke will sacrifice himself. Um, uh, Kylo Ren will become Darth Vader. He will don his suit, a brand new suit, but it will be Darth Vader. Um, but he won't, be, it'll be interesting because he'll have conflict. He's playing his grandfather, but he's playing him rather than being him. And that's the conflict that's, that's interesting. Uh, Poe Dameron, uh, will become like a general. Uh, I think he'll have a much bigger role. Uh, I would have loved to see more of him. Uh, he was awesome. He was a great character. He was just wonderful. But, uh, overall, I like the movie. I did. I, overall, I, I like the movie. There's some jarring things to me. Uh, some little plot points I had some issues with, but the set designs, the, the puppets, the the animatronics, the, the real life sets, it really felt tangible in a way that the prequels weren't. But also the story was strong enough for the characters that it really held the movie together. You know, it really held the movie together well and uh, I was happy. I, I was happy. I can't wait to see it again. In fact, I'm seeing it again tomorrow morning. So, <laughs> you know, I didn't dislike the movie. Uh, for sure, but J.J. Uh, Abrams did a, a great job. I mean, what a monumental task resurrecting Star Wars, taking over from George Lucas. You know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know many people who could have pulled it off, not you know as well as he did. And good job on the cast. Holy shit, the cast is something else. I I cannot wait to see Ray in Episode Eight and Ray in Episode Nine. It's going to be a wonderful tale. So, what did you guys think of the movie? Did it did it live up to your expectations? Did it did some things bother you like they bothered me? Uh, yeah, we've waited so long. It's such high expectations, isn't it? It's what movie could live up to that? It it would be really hard to do that. And remember, Star Wars had some goofy moments and things like that. And then in Empire, they knocked it out of the the park. And I I expect them them to knock it out of the park with the next one. I really, really do, and uh, for a first one, again, in this new trilogy, I think they did a pretty good job, so, anyways, guys, until next time.